Hello my friend and uh, this is the tutorial uh, I'm Warren um, if you uh, didn't know that uh, this is the tutorial for separator and um, I know I mentioned I would probably get this uh, going a lot sooner and I apologize for that but here it is anyway and um, I don't think the stop the song stopped being cool in the meantime so hopefully you can still um, <laughs> appreciate this even though it's not quite timely um, but yeah uh, so uh, I'll just yeah I'll just go give it a, give it a shot so um, basically um, it okay um, for the most part the song is um, mostly two chords but um, as you could see by the first part I played there um, in the ending it starts to get a little bit different and um, there's some variations throughout those throughout the song on those two chords based on what people are playing there um, but why don't we start with that section it's actually the last section of um, the album version, which uh, is different, which is what makes it different from the Cambridge Corn Exchange version that uh, Tom played by uh, himself there. And um, I like to start things backwards, I guess. So <laughs> let's go for it. Um, we are in uh, standard tuning, and I have a capo on the sixth fret. And uh, that's going to bring us to when we play this kind of E power chord shape it's gonna sound like a B flat. So if you're playing with anybody who um, wants to play along, tell them they can play in the key of B flat mixolydian. And if they don't know what that is, tough luck for them. <laughs> but um, so your first chord is gonna be uh, zero, two, two, four, five, zero of this ending section. I've got my index finger mashed down, okay, on three strings here. Really, I could mash down two, but um, that's more difficult. And so I've got it mashed down on three strings, the fifth through the third, st third string. Um, and then the ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string. So really, two fingers are pressing on the same string. A little redundant, but it helps because this is easier. And then your pinky on your fifth fret there. Okay. It's all relative to the capo. So you're gonna hear two B flats. Okay. Now it's basically an E shape. Um, if it weren't transposed it would sound like an E. So we'll just we'll just call it an E for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, but this is gonna be an E and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop your pinky back one fret. To the fourth fret and that's the same thing but uh, only one finger different okay your pinky is now on the fourth fret so that's zero two two four four zero and then you're gonna go to x maybe x here on the fifth string or zero doesn't matter but then zero two three zero zero two three zero at the end this is uh, gonna be a D two with no third shape. You're gonna go to a D add nine with no third, which is just one finger different again. So X X zero two two zero. So you're gonna go E power chord to this E variation, which is. 
call the E with a seventh, E major seven with no third, and then a D two with no third to a D add nine with no third. And there's a seventh as well, D major nine with no third. So again, E power chord. These proper names will be E power chord, E major seven no third, D two with no third. D major 9 with no third. So, what's up with Tom leaving the thirds out? Well, there's actually a good reason. Um, but, uh, not for the scope of this video. And so you're gonna hear da 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 da. It's pretty cool, I'm like this little melodic descending thing. So, how do we put all that together? Well, in the strumming hand, you're gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So you see what I did there is I'm doing a kind of a strum that's kind of going down up 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 for eight beats up up and then another down one three four five six seven eight back on that first beat after the eighth, uh, I'm gonna strum down again. So there are still down strums in between all of those up strums, um, but they're just pretty quiet. So that's kind of why uh, I you know, relate it that way. But you can kind of throw in some down strums and make it more full and uh, kind of more busy. Uh, just make sure you keep those up strums going because that's where all the emphasis is in this part, okay? So, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... If you notice, I switched on the and of four uh, to get over to the next chord, which is your, you know, E major seven with no third. So, E power chord, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Um, apologize, it was after the one. It was after the one of the next measure. So one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and so right after the the beat uh, beat one, which is the fifth beat if you want to count it as a total of eight. But two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and uh, basically I'll try to make that clear in the document that I'm including. But uh, the next part you go after two measures of that E, you're gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two. So if you notice, I basically do the same thing when I go. I'm gonna go drop a fret after a measure. So we'll put it all together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. give it a nice down strum when I'm going back to the E. So that's the ending section and um, uh, the other sections that come before it in the song there's a couple main variations that Tom will do of these two chords. It's like E chord, D chord, E chord, D chord. It's going to do basic E here, okay? Just a basic E shape. 0, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. He's doing a strumming pattern, so a teeny bit different from the end. And he's going to do one, two, and, and, and. There's a down, up, down. So one, two, and, and, and two, and three, and four. So on beats three and four, he's going to leave the fourth string with his ring finger. He's going to leave that and go to the third string. He's going to go three and four. fret which was there to begin with to the second fret so one two three and four and and two and three and four three and four and you can strum all the strings it's fine but uh, Tom usually only emphasizes the, the the top three or four strings when he does something kind of funky you know so one two So I'll take it slow. One, two, three, and four, and, and two, and three, and four. Again, one, two, three, and, and, and two, and three, and four. Full 
Okay, so this next one is going to be kind of an A, D over A figure, okay? Functions like an A because he's got the open A string, but it's a D chord. So one, two, and the chord is X, zero, zero, two, one, uh, sorry, X, zero, zero, two, zero, zero. And you're going to go one, two, three, and four. And on the end, the end of four, you're gonna go one, two, three, and four. Hammer, 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 hammer. So there's that technique, a hammer on, and it's gonna go from the third string fourth fret to the third string sixth fret. Okay, so you're gonna end up on that double dot right there. You can't see it on my guitar unless I turn it and show you. There's two dots, two dots right there. So one, two, three. And quick kind of hammer on now uh, from familiar with uh, you know rhythmic uh, rhythmic theory there it's it's really like a super quick like a 30 second note on the um, beat subdivision kind of idea there one two three and four okay so one two three and four and and, and then after the hammer you're gonna let go and then do your next up strum so down down I'm back on the fourth fret after the hammer up, hammer up, three and four, and two, three and four, and two, three and four. And it's really, really cool. It's really rocking. So one, two, three and four, hammer up, and then after you do hammer up, up, you do another up strum. It's super syncopated. A lot of offbeat strumming here, and you're gonna go back to the. Second fret after that, so you're gonna go hammer up, up, hammer up, up, hammer up, up. So one, two, three, and four, hammer up, up, one, two, three, and four, hammer up, up. Slow it down. One, two, three, and four, up, up, up. One, two, three, and four, hammer. On the second fret, and then you do one more up strum. So you're gonna go up, 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 up. hammer up, 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 and right after that up strum, consecutively, just no break. You can do the down strum. So you're gonna strum with your right hand, and you're gonna do this hammer on to the 4th fret from the 2nd fret, and then pull off, and then slide. So you're going to go hammer on to the 4th fret, pull off, back to the 2nd fret. Just like that. And then you're going to slide to the 1st fret. Let's show you real slow. There you go. So you're going to go one, two, three, and four, and, 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 and down. Went out of tune there. So one, two, three, and four, up, 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 down. So you're going to go up, down, up, down. Slow. pull off slide. I can't sing it. It's too fast. Okay, so you're going to go all together. One, two, three, four, and, 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 and four. And then you're going to go one, back to the E major. So it's a lot to take in. And, 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 and 
figure E. It's a complex technical figure there, okay? Back to the E, right after. So one, two, three, and four. Up, 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 figure E. So now the next section uh, we're going to do um, is sort of a variation on that, okay? So the first section I showed you in the tutorial was the ending. And this second one that I just did is sort of, um, wake me up and wake me up. Or he does it in different sections during different versions of the song, so I don't want to mislead, but, you know, that's one. And so here's another variation. We'll just call it Variation A and B. A is a cool one that kind of comes in in the album version. Variation B shows up in the live versions and also in the original solo acoustic version at Cambridge. But uh, basically what you're going to see is Tom's going to go one. So the E part is going to be the same one. So it's sort of different, just basic D2, no third chord, just similar to the beginning. So you can go X, 0, 0, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and So you're just going to do da na 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 you're going to do a third fret, second string, do your second fret, second string, all while you're holding your index finger on the third string. Now that's one. Um, the second half of you know variation B is going to be one, two, three, and four, and and on the end of four you're going to add your thumb on the second fret to make it a D two over F sharp. And this is the third. The third uh, actually is in this part of the chord. So I said D two no third earlier. This is a D D over F sharp. D two over F sharp. And then so one. Strum, then you add your thumb. One, two, three, and four, and, and four, three, and four, one. So one and sorry, one and two and three and four. And I did my ring finger on the fourth fret, fifth string. So one, two, three, and four, and, and two and three and four, one. Okay, three and four, three and four. So I'm just going down. Up, and I'm going on the fourth fret, off, and then on, on, off, on, 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 on. Okay, so I'll put that together. Section B is kind of weird, so um, variation B is kind of weird. One, two, three, and four, and, and two, and three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, To get technical. Tom York does all sorts of little variations, even on variation B, and a little bit on variation A, not as much just because that's kind of a more uh, subdued kind of rigid melody there. And uh, he does some more variations. Now where is he getting these other variations? You can't just play any note and they all sound right. Some notes are going to sound wrong, some notes are going to sound right, and so how do you tell the difference between what's going to sound right and what's going to sound wrong. Well, here's some music theory that kind of answers that question. Um, the music theory says, if you recall, we're in B-flat mixolydian, which in our case, since we're transposed, we'll just call it E mixolydian. E mixolydian is going to go open, second fret, fourth fret on the sixth string, open, second fret, fourth fret again on the fifth string, open, fourth string, 
and then second fret on the, uh, the fourth string. So that's the first octave. If I were to complete the uh, second octave, just because you know we have a guitar and guitar has a lot more range all within the same area. beautiful stuff all within the first kind of position on the guitar. Uh, the E mixolydian scale is very special. It's different from the E major scale, which is da 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 Tom York touches the E major scale at the end of Separator. Um, if you think this is over, then you're wrong. doing E major there. But for the most part, the song is in E mixolydian, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat, 7, there's that interesting note there, and it's right there, octave higher. That's why he's playing all these D chords, because he uses that open D in this scale. So why am I showing you the E mixolydian scale? It's because you can bring all sorts of your own ideas into variation B if you understand the scale. You can bring any of those notes from Mixolydian into it and uh, thus create your own riff that still fits with the mood or flavor of separator. Uh, the musical word for it is tonality, okay? So the E Mixolydian tonality. <laughs> if you're playing with the E Mixolydian tonality, it'll all sound like it fits depending on which section you're in. Of course, if you're at the end, then Mixolydian sort of doesn't work when you go in here, but then it'll work again once you're here, down to the D chords, because we're um, in Mixolydian and D is in Mixolydian. But not when you go in here, don't try and throw in this note right there. The D and the D sharp don't, don't work together, so you hear the clash, and that's why music theory is awesome, is because you can reproduce the same kind of results like it's almost like science but anyway so i'll show you what i would do if i were tom york knowing uh the music theory that i know uh i would kind of change it up i would change up the 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 riff a little bit One, Obviously, I'm doing way too much. Um, there's something to be said about what's tasteful, you know, where to draw the line. But clearly, you can see... You can see I can do a lot of stuff that still sounds like it's part of the same mood, uh, tonality of the, the song. And yet, uh, where did I get it from? You know, Tom York didn't play those things, so how can I come up with it? Well, I know where, or I think I know, right? The theory, that's what music theory is. You think you know where he got those ideas from. And so that's where it is. Um, so hopefully you find that helpful. I'll write all the chords in the uh, document I'm gonna send you, and you'll see uh, sort of all of it visually represented there. And uh, hopefully, yeah, you're satisfied with this tutorial and uh, appreciate your patience and uh, yeah can't wait to um, yeah see see Radiohead some more this year and uh, in England be uh, be pretty awesome you know maybe uh, grab a grab a beer with uh, the guys in London you know <laughs> that'd be pretty cool alrighty uh, so take care alrighty bye